This is Michael Orl from MobileBurn.com, and today I have with me the HTC Droid Eris. It's the second Android Power smartphone for Verizon Wireless. We're going to open it up, see what's in the box, and take a first look at the device itself. We'll pop open the box and see what we've got in here. Of course, we have the Droid Eris itself. You know, it's a half VGA, 3.2 inch touchscreen display on it. Um, very similar to the HTC Hero for Sprint. And what else do we have in the box? See how this lifts up. User guide, warranty information, all that kind of fun stuff. And let's see what we have underneath the bottom panel. Not a heck of a lot. Uh, considering the device comes at only uh, $99.99 um, with a two-year contract, I guess they don't feel the need to throw in too many accessories. So we've got just the USB to mini USB cable here that's also used with the wall charger. And here's the Droid Eris itself. Let's pull off some of the uh, protective coverings on it. That's a 3.2 inch half VGA resolution touchscreen display. It's a capacitive touchscreen. Also has capacitive touch sensitive buttons across the bottom. That differs from the hardware buttons that the HTC Hero for Sprint has, but it still has hardware buttons for call send and call end, which also double duty for power. And of course the trackball in the middle. And we also have a protective cover over the 5 megapixel autofocus camera which sits on the back. Uh, there's no flash or anything. Uh, nothing much to see on the left hand edge of the device. And on the right hand edge we have the volume control right here. 3.5mm headphone jack up top and of course the mini USB port on the bottom. If you look carefully there at the top you might notice a little place there for grabbing the rear cover to remove it. So we'll pull that off so we can see what's in the back. And of course we have the large battery. We'll take a look and see if it has a milliamp rating on it. Looks like we're dealing with a 1300 milliamp hour battery. There's no SIM card of course. This is a CDMA only device. Right here we have the micro SD card slot and there's a card pre-installed. It's an 8 gigabyte uh, micro SD HC card. It means it should support cards as large as uh, 16 or th even 32 gigabytes when they come out and not much else. We'll just slide the back, snap it back in, and the phone's powering up. Now that the Droid Eris has finished booting up, I'm going to show you how to activate it. Uh, you have to hit the power button here, and then you grab the bar and drag it down. Now one of the things with the Sprint version of the HTC Hero, which is very similar to the device, since it had hardware buttons across here, you could just press the menu button twice to activate it, so it didn't require use of the touch screen. Uh, it makes this a little less convenient, uh, quite similar to the uh, original Motorola Droid for Verizon, which uh, also goes on sale November 6th, the same day as the HTC Droid Eris here, except the uh, Droid Eris will be on sale for only uh, $99.99, which is $100 less than what the Motorola Droid will sell for. So you notice the very smooth action of the home screen on the Droid Eris. Um, I no longer have the HTC Hero with me to compare, but it definitely seems smoother and um, snappier than I recall from the Sprint version of the HTC Hero. Uh, the Sprint version that I had at the time hadn't received the firmware updates that the European version was uh, just getting then, so that, that probably explains the difference here. I'll take a look at lists of widgets here. Here's the HTC widgets and of course there are a lot of them. They have uh, multiple sizes for a lot of them as well. Let's see, so like maybe calendar. So you have some choices in what kind of widget you want to have on the screen. Now I have to admit that the uh, touch sensitive controls down here at the bottom don't seem as good as those on the Motorola Droid. Um, I haven't played with it too much, so I can't really say for sure. There are some stock Google uh, widgets as well. And I find it slightly unusual that this device is branded with Google on the back, in spite of the fact that it has the HTC Sense user interface. Um, not normally um, something we're accustomed to seeing. We'll jump into the main menu here and take a look around. See, there's not a lot of Verizon branded services. Uh, no VZ Navigator or anything like that, and since this is uh, Cupcake, Android 1.5, there's no Google Maps navigation like you find on the Motorola Droid. 
pull up the menu here and we'll throw this into a list mode in case um, for those of you that prefer this it might be a little bit easier to move through. Go back to grid here. Jump back to the home screen and I'll hit menu once again and pull up the settings. We'll go into uh, about phone just so you can see it is indeed Cupcake firmware version 1.5 there. I'll hit the messages icon here so we can get into the SMS system and we'll pull up uh, one of these default messages that Verizon sent when the phone was first activated. So give us a chance to look at the QWERTY keyboard, the virtual QWERTY keyboard. Slight vibration when I touch my finger to the keyboard. You have to forgive me for being a little slow I'm, uh, looking over a camera. You can see the autocorrect. I typed YRST and it understands I mean test. Hit spacebar twice to get a, a period. Should be able to get a landscape mode keyboard as well. And there we are. And I was very pleased with uh, the virtual keyboard on the HTC Hero for Sprint. I don't expect this one to be uh, any different. should be really fantastic. I've just signed into my Gmail account for the first time and pulled up the Android Market. It's giving us the terms of service here. We're going to accept that so we can take a quick look at the app catalog here. You can see this is the older version. Again, not the same as found on the Motorola Droid. Um, it's not as many categories. Uh, it's not as easy to view uh, you know, paid versus free applications and that kind of stuff, but it's still pretty decent. You can always search for just about anything. I'm in the data synchronization section of the settings, so we can take a look at some of the options we have here. Now that I have the Gmail account set up, uh, you can see the calendar, Gmail messages, and of course contacts right now. You can see the indicator are uh, synchronizing. If you notice before, there's also support for Exchange Active Sync, so you can put in a easily configure a corporate account which will also give you access to uh, contacts, uh, messages, and calendar appointments. And you can sync with uh, a cop desktop copy of uh, Microsoft Outlook as well. I'm now in the contacts application. You can see we've successfully synchronized with our Gmail account. So we have a bunch of contacts here with images. This is the main list. There's also, of course, favorites, smaller subset. You can define groups. You can also get um, updates for Facebook, Twitter, and that kind of stuff if you uh, log into your account, and call history. And when you go into any particular contact here, you get the same kind of sorting. You can see all of their messages, all the email, back and forth with the person. Again, status updates, um, pictures from Flickr, and of course call history for these people. Now, since this is a brand new device, I haven't placed a single call yet. We're not going to see anything. One thing I can show you, though, is when we go here, we can add Actually, the contacts came up automatically as favorites, which is uh, kind of cool. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't do this. This was, They were just marked as favorites to start with, and it preloaded the widget, which is uh, really kind of slick. So now you can just tap on one of them and get a nice menu here where you can quickly do something. You know, Call them, send them a message, or even send out email. This is the text messaging system. Uh, it's a widget, and we don't have any other messages, so I can't flip through them, but normally you could. I can, however, delete it. You'll notice the weather. Just tapping on the weather portion of the clock takes you up to the weather, shows you weather in your current location. And you can also predefine other cities, such as New York, New York. I had showed you the text messaging widget. There's also a matching email widget, so you can flip through all your different email messages right from the home screen. A couple of handy switches for turning on Wi Fi and Bluetooth. And of course you can always add more widgets. There are seven home screen panels in total. I've got the Mobile Burn web page pulled up in the browser just to show you how it works. Um, we're going to go into landscape mode though, just because it suits the video camera a little bit better. You can see we have double tap zooming. And also pinch and stretch multi-touch zooming. Flash support as well. Browser seems pretty responsive. We're on a Wi-Fi connection now, so it's a little bit faster than you would, might see on a 3G connection, but um, pretty impressive overall. If you're searching for something, though, rather than pulling up the browser, it's often easier just to hit the search key from the home screen and then just type in something. I'll make up something here. Asian 
cupcakes, we'll say. Don't know if there really are such things, but what the heck? And it'll automatically load the results in Google in the browser. And for those who want to see how the other half lives, here's the Motorola Droid next to the HTC Droid Eris. You can see that the um, display on the Motorola Droid is much larger, it's 3.7 inches and um, wide VGA resolution as opposed to the half VGA resolution on the Droid Eris. But the uh, Motorola Droid is a much larger, heavier device overall. So that's my quick look and unboxing of the HTC Droid Eris for Verizon Wireless, a very nice looking version, uh, variant of the HTC Hero. Um, very snappy device, uh, lower cost than the Motorola Droid, which uh, it comes out with at the same time on uh, November 6th. And again, HTC Droid Eris, I'm Michael Oral for MobileBurn.com.